It has to be said immediately that Milan has no sightseeing to offer. You'll quickly get bored if you spend more than five days there. However, there are some nice excursions within reach. For example, to Venice by train or a trip to the famous Lake Garda. Milan is sometimes the venue for international furniture exhibitions. However, if you don't work in that industry and you are not a potential buyer, these trade fairs are unlikely to interest you. I tried to get into the Michelangelo exhibition in the center of Milan. You'll find it very easily, right by the cathedral square. Entrance tickets are around 15 to 18 euros. Yet, to my complete amazement, what you get for your ticket is a hall around 50 square meters filled with computer generated pictures. There is nothing interesting there whatsoever. The best things in Milan are the shopping and the restaurants. Remember that when you're buying clothes at discounts of between 50 and 70 percent, there's a further saving to be had in the form of tax free refunds. If you hold a non EU passport, non EU citizens don't have to pay. VAT, which is 12% of the price, and it can be refunded to you, provided you go about receiving the refund in the right way. Later on, I'll discuss how you can get your tax free refund directly in the city center before even going to the airport. In part one, I was talking about the outlet store. In the center of Milan. This outlet has a great range of goods on offer and is located in the city center of Milan at Via Corso Vittoria Emanuele 230. In between two brand shops for Louis Jo and Dr. Loda, and just 500 meters from the Cathedral Square. Milan's shopping center is primarily directed towards the Russian clientele. You can count on finding Russian speaking shop assistants in any of Milan's main shops. In fact, even some restaurants have been offering a printed menu in Russian translation too. Dear Russians, welcome to Milan. Let me tell you about one thing which happened to me. I was wandering around the shops along Milan's four upscale boutique streets around Via Monte Napoleone and Spiga. Oh, and by the way, for anyone who's dieting, you can find freshly squeezed vegetable juices on Monte Napoleone, including celery and carrot. But let me get back to my story. So I was wandering around these legendary shopping streets and decided to go into a cafe there. I've been to Milan many times, but this story is about the time I was there in 2015. The waiter spoke charmingly with me and then asked me very frankly where all the Russians had gone. All the income they'd previously brought to Milan had just disappeared. The huge money they spent in the city top end boutiques, the fat tips they left behind after meals in pricey eateries. I had to explain what had happened to the ruble exchange rate, that the previous exchange rate of 30 rubles to 1 euro had shifted almost overnight to 80 rubles. In other words, Russian money was now worth more than two and a half times less than before. 
trips to Milan were now costing three times as much as they had. And all this meant that luxury brand shopping was also costing three times more than before. I was charmed to hear that even so, the Milanese would be waiting for the Russians to come back again. Shops that year were suffering really bad losses because of all this. The waiter said that people from Europe, even if they were dressed in Roberto Cavalli suit for 5,000 euros, would often order just a cola and a baked potato. Or here's another story which I'd previously mentioned in one of my other videos. But the story bears repeating about a discussion with an Italian female taxi driver. People in Milan have really got the idea that Russian men simply send their wives to Milan with a gold credit card to go shopping. The idea is, they thought, that Russian women are so often depressed that they badly need shopping trips. This lady taxi driver said that among her friends it was cause for celebration if a man ever invited you to a cafe or for a pizza, let alone to an upscale restaurant. What it all says is that Italian women really value Russian men for their generous and open-hearted spirit. They are much more generous, for example, than men from the northern Italian regions. Here's another case about a Russian woman working as a shop assistant in a Milan boutique who was previously from Moscow but had married an Italian and moved to Milan. Her opinion was that Russian men like to give the appearance of being tough and stern, but inside they're tender and kind, like crusty bread with soft dough inside. Italian men, however, were the opposite, she said. They might be all compliments and smiles, but in family life they're crabby and jealous. My next video is going to be about Vienna with some detailed stories about how Russian women live, who have got married in Austria. And bear in mind, Austria has the highest standard of living in the European Union. Anyhow, let's get back to our topic of shopping in Milan. Of course, the best times to come are during the sales, which are in winter and summer. In December, they have the pre-sales, with discounts of 30%. Then in January, the full sale begins, with discounts of 50% or more. I don't remember the exact dates of the summer sales, since I've never been in, since I've never been in Milan over that period. In fact, the only sales I have visited in Italy were in Rome. If you come to Rome for the summer sales, then you'd be best advised to come on the very first days. Everything's quickly snapped by the Chinese shopping tour groups. That's definitely what happened in my case. I was looking at a nice jumper and put it down just for 10 minutes to think about it. And it had already been sold and lots of other things had been sold too. I think the same situation applies in Milan too, so don't delay on your travel date. Come at the very opening of the sales. Hotel prices are higher over those periods. On the topic of hotels, it's worth finding hotels on booking.com, which are farther away from major highways. Milan has a lot of very noisy tram lines on major roads. Look for multi-story hotels and choose rooms on the upper stories. I stayed near the Cathedral Square once. 
and it was so noisy there that I couldn't get to sleep. One nice and quiet hotel I can vouch for is the Four Points Sheraton Milan Centre. It might be a bit far, but it's only seven minutes in a taxi, and the ride would cost between seven and ten euros, which is worth the price of your beauty sleep, with delicious breakfasts too. You can watch the continuation of my discussion of shopping in Milan in part three.